On May 27, 1949, the Battle of Shanghai was over, and Shanghai became the largest communist-run city in the world. At that time, foreign news agencies continued filing dispatches overseas, and English-language newspapers continued to operate in the city. So what did they have to say about the communists? This library contains the archives of the original newspapers from that era. Xu Jiahui Library is one of the oldest modern libraries in China. Built in 1847, the library's huge collection of old foreign language publications is a treasure and a legacy of Shanghai. The North China Daily News was one of the most long-standing broadsheets in Shanghai. And on May 27, 1949, the newspaper published this article, and the gist of it might be found here. It is said that several Chinese men seeing red soldiers resting on the street were heard to remark, look, communist soldiers sleeping on the sidewalk, although some of the big buildings are wide open. The Tsilao, devils, meaning the nationalists, would have walked in as if they owned the place. And then down here, I think, is the gist of the article. Up to the moment, not a single report has been heard of a complaints of bad behavior on the part of the People's Army. The only criticism people heard about the PLA and the communists, according to the China Weekly Review, an American-owned journal at the time, was that they were too Spartan, too hard on themselves. In its first issue after the communist takeover of Shanghai, the China Weekly Review ran a full-length feature titled The Liberation of Shanghai. That feature presented a very touching portrayal of the PLA. The soldiers were dog-tired. They sat on the sidewalks with their backs against the buildings and dropped off to sleep where they were. The evening of that first day, it rained, and many of them who as yet had been assigned no shelter were soaked to the skin. But they refused offers of dry clothing, food, tea, even hot water, saying they could not take things away from the people. At that time, foreign reporters in Shanghai were writing overwhelmingly positive news stories about the communists, and that raised suspicion among the editors back in Britain and the United States. Were these a product of censorship? Were these writers writing against their will? Very quickly, the Shanghai reporters gave answers to these questions. No red pressure. AP bureau chief of Shanghai, Fred Hampson, proclaimed, the good coverage, according to him, was because of the sharp contrast between the old and the new. The North China Daily News also put up an editorial named A Good Press, defending its journalistic integrity. Positive judgment, the paper said, has been corroborated by the private commercial telegrams, which have also been sent by offices in Shanghai to their correspondents abroad. It's interesting to read those positive reports from 72 years ago, especially considering that the media tends to focus on the bad. Many eyewitness accounts later seem to confirm those positive reports. The new authorities have secured a good world press and by their actions have surmounted any prejudice which might have formerly existed. <laughs> 